they are just busy little chickens and doing what chickens do. Hello and welcome back whatever time of day it is that you folks are watching this video. I want to start this video by catching up on a couple of the things that we've gotten done over the last couple of days that haven't made it into video footage. Today is going to be an absolutely busy day. We get a break in weather again today. We had a couple days of rainy, kind of wet weather, but we got a little bit of a break today. It's going to get up to 74, so I'm so excited um, as spring keeps taunting us. There have been some really severe storms. Good morning, Mr. Rooster. Yes, I'll show you guys here in just a minute. We did not get it too bad here. We had really high winds over this past couple of days, and it doesn't look like, you know, we've lost anything. No trees really came down. We got some limbs, don't get me wrong, but we didn't have any major trees or anything come down. And, uh, you know, one of my concerns, I, I had two big ones with the wind. One was the chicken coop not kind of blowing over or um toppling it sits on a little bit of an incline and when the uh when i grab a hold of it it's very easy to tilt backwards so i put some extra weight on the on the uh, nose of it because it's just so balanced in the center especially when the chickens get back in the coop and then the other was we planted our orchard and i know noel has uh, dropped a couple of mentions of that so i'm going to show you our orchard this morning i'm going to show you a little bit about uh, me putting some chickens to work and what they're looking like and then I have got to get some projects started today. So we'll start with what's behind me. I don't know that I can get all this in one shot, but uh, let me turn it around and show you our orchard. So here is the orchard. The one over there. I'll show you kind of what I did here for these. We'll talk about what they are, but Here's one of our trees. This is, I believe, a peach. Yep. Reliance peach. Beautiful tree. I did four stakes around each of them and kind of put even weight all the way around on some masonry string to tie them off to keep them straight. That really protected them during these high winds. And yeah, I've got two back here. I still have to do that too. It got dark on me the other night, but I got those done. Um, and then as far as just protecting the trunk, I had a piece of four inch slotted uh, or corrugated um, piping left from drainage at the old house. And it was about a 10 foot section. So I just basically took the um, cutting tool that I have and sliced that up into smaller sections and then ripped it right up the length and um, split it open and just slipped it on top of the tree trunks and so that should keep deer and other animals from eating at the trunks uh, all I'll need to do is protect the buds and the tops of the trees while these trees are still young and uh, again four stakes come back here and show you one of the apples so the reason I did four stakes around this is so that I could get really straight trunks on this none of the strings are actually wrapped around the trunk itself they loop around and the stakes that I have in the ground were left over from where I did the fence at the old house so again just kind of repurposing what I have and the purpose of using those stakes is they still have some pretty good flexibility to them so as the tree grows a little bit it will actually just kind of pull the stakes inward and uh, should allow to, to keep the trunk straight but also give me some flexibility without cutting into the trunk as it grows and I left plenty of slack in the line so I can let them out over time uh, so I'm probably good for a year or more on these stakes but I also if I have some issues with deer the next plan that I, I think I'll do is maybe put and uh, tack some uh, fencing like chicken wire fencing around the tops since the bottoms are protected I can put some around the tops and that should keep the deer from being able to get their little mouths in around my buds so I don't know it's worth a shot I went ahead and set them that way and if I need to move them I can always pull them back out but we have kind of in the back row we have a plum and then we have a couple of pears so we have a pair of pears go figure not that i've never made that joke before 
and then in the middle so we did it kind of a uh, a three two three pattern because we still want to pick up some cherries uh, but in the middle I've got my apples so we've got two different types of apple trees and then in the front uh, I have the two peach trees and the last plum tree and that's my little tiny one up here is is the remaining plum now the plums are self-pollinating so they didn't need to be right together uh, and it let me kind of balance these out now there is room if we decide we want to add uh, in the middle row we can actually go two trees out but I think what we're gonna do is take our two cherry trees and put our two cherry trees kind of in the front here and balance that off and when we planted these what we were looking for is taller trees toward the back so we did pay attention to the height of the trees I think we're in good shape there and like I said then the other thing we can do is if we decide these are growing really well and we want more we can go up toward the house and plant more up toward the house. Um, this is also going to give us a little bit of coverage from the neighbor's yard behind us on this side and uh, make it look really pretty when we're looking out the bedroom window upstairs uh, in the mornings. So that is our orchard. I am really stoked about it. The trees look like they are doing great. Uh, the last thing with this orchard and, and kind of what we talked about was that one of the things we talked about is we were going to put these orchard trees, grow our orchard in the rear of the back seven. And this is definitely not in the rear of the back seven. This is kind of just in behind the property where we were talking we could have a good run range. Well, with us extending the fence a little bit for the yard and making the yard bigger, we don't need to use this side of the property as much. Plus, I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to oversaturate trees or have issues. And putting the orchard right up here, this spot stays wet from the, from the I guess, perspective that the ground is, is moist. But because of the way we've got the swale, I don't know if I can catch this here. Because of the way we got kind of the swale out here in the middle, the water runoff um, comes off this particular piece of property. So it stays wet but it doesn't stay so wet that I'm worried about root rot or anything else like that. It just means that I shouldn't have to water these trees nearly as much as if I put them in the back. Um, they could get too much or too little and I, I can't monitor it nearly as well. Plus, we'll be able to care for the trees a little bit better and offer a um, really nice, pretty backyard, um, which I think is a good thing. And it still leaves us tons of room back here to do anything we want to do most likely we will have our we've got our birdhouses back here it's hard to see but we've got our birdhouses back here and most likely we will also have kind of in the middle a greenhouse maybe two greenhouses um, off to one side we'll probably do our chicken coop as kind of a permanent run and again having the permanent run with the trees up here lays the property out to where it makes it harder for aerial predators to get into the chicken run um, and if we wanted to we could extend the um, we could extend the chicken fencing around the orchard and let the chickens kind of just nibble at whatever's on the ground there so we did put some thought into the change and i think it's going to be a beneficial one in the interim I think what we're going to do is look for some seedling trees. But I want to find some seedling trees to probably plant in that same area of the back seven for sustainability of any kind of lumber and wood purpose things that we want to have. So again, for just sustainability of having some lumber and trees available to us over the years, that would be a good area to bring back some growth of uh, kind of a wooded area. Um, could be shade, could be we want to put animals in it, I don't know, but we'll make good use of it, whatever that happens to be. The other project that I kind of worked on was trying to move things around. You saw in the previous video, I moved the... Thank you for that. You saw in the previous video that I moved the bird feeder and that kind of pole. The next step was to get around this uh, flagpole behind me and that meant pulling out all of the uh, paver blocks etc 
and then digging around the flagpole around all the plants in there and trying to make it where I can get a uh, stub of concrete out and kind of bring it into a smaller circle. Well, I didn't feel like digging and it was gonna rain, so I guess I did what every good homesteader would do. I put my chickens to work. I put my chickens to work and moved their fencing around the flagpole. So they actually have been scratching and digging and they are getting a feast of worms and all sorts of insects, ants. Good morning all. Now do you want to say good morning? You want to crow? No? What y'all doing? So they have dug out the base of the old flagpole really good. Now what I intend to do with that is just kind of try to split it up and then take a cutting wheel to the uh, steel pins or the galvanized pins that are coming up out of the ground for the old flagpole just to get it down below the surface and then we're going to plant flowers around this. But I didn't feel like digging it out. It was going to be wet. The chickens have been doing a great job for me tilling this up, making it easier. You can see there's a plant back here that they have completely exposed. And uh, yeah, they're getting some good eats. While the weather is good today, I do have a couple of projects. So I'm gonna have to put this camera down and get started on those. The temporary fencing around the perimeter of the pool is holding up great, but I need to come over here and with this old pump, that was in the pool, I'm gonna test it and see if it still works. If not, I need to figure out what we're going to use, whether I need to go buy one or if I have something I can use to just hook up and let this pool begin to drain. It is supposed to rain on Sunday morning, Saturday night. Actually, so tonight it's supposed to rain and it is supposed to uh, pretty gully wash I think for about four or five hours. So if I don't get to the pool today, I'm not worried about it because we're just gonna get more water in it tomorrow anyway. Yeah, that's what it is. So that needs to get started tomorrow though so that it is dry because we have people on the schedule to come out on Tuesday. They'll be out Monday night to mobilize their equipment and Tuesday they will begin trucking in and filling this pool so whatever I'm gonna do with it needs to be done by Tuesday morning that includes draining it because I'm sure there's nothing quite like trying to pour a hundred tons of aggregate into a pool full of water and have it just spill out over the sides and go everywhere so a little bit they're gonna have to deal with majority needs to come out so pool number one I got that on my list uh, two I have more posts so I opened up 45 feet in the front but if these guys can get in here and do a little bit of grading for me to fill this pool, they're gonna need these side rods and probably the ones at the end removed from the old uh, fence. So I still have all those up. Those at least need to get dug out today, even if they don't get filled, um, because I do foresee taking some of the grading here in the backyard and cutting it inward. But I wanna leave that as flat as humanly possible. So I am gonna get this down and probably get the shovel and get started digging up some of these poles and i'll catch you guys here in a few All right, so you pr really? All right, so you probably saw in the last video um, 
getting these pulled out on the uh, west end of the fence. I just wanted to show the, the two tools I'm really using is just a 70 inch uh, post hole digger and, and tamper bar. Uh, it's good, solid, rigid. And then the most miraculous piece, just a short piece of chain with a couple of bolts through it. And I just tighten that around the two. I tighten that around the actual pole. And that makes it really snug so it doesn't slip and gives me just enough then to slip around my spud bar and uh, lift that right up out of the ground. Um, honestly, I think it would come out on its own if the ground was drier, but there's a lot of water suction underneath it, so kind of needs the extra help. I've got uh, five of these to get pulled out, so I'm gonna get these pulled, and that's actually the easy part. The hard part's getting the concrete off the bottom of the posts, and if there's an easier way to do it than with a sledgehammer, I don't know what that is. All right. Yep. But uh, that'll be the next step is once I get these out, I'm busting the concrete off the bottom, putting the concrete back in the hole. That gives me the space filler that I need. And then uh, fill it up, tamp it down so nobody trips in it. And uh, like I said, this is going to get possibly shoved over with a uh, bulldozer, who knows, or a bobcat. So it doesn't need to be too pretty. Right now, they just need to be out of the way. So. I'm going to get this chain wrapped around one and we'll get it pulled up out of the ground. I am just getting ready to pull this out of the ground, man. You didn't like with the other crank mix. No, I got to go back and figure out which one of the wrenches I was using. I don't have the right one. Because you don't have a white right one? Nope. Just a break? Papa, just a break? Now Papa got to get this one cleaned off. Yep. Oh no, buddy, that's okay. I need to go get a small little shovel that I'm going to use just to scrape some of that dirt off. You want to come with me? Yeah. All right. How's it going digging that hole or filling the hole? Is your new birthday excavator doing a good job? Yeah. 
but at my birthday. Yeah. Your birthday now. But it's going to be your birthday earlier. It will. Someday. I didn't record the whole thing because it was a lot of the same thing over and over again, but Noelle, Kate, Jake, they came out to help. Um, we actually got, and I'll show you that here. So we got 11 poles out of the ground and the holes are filled in, the concrete's all busted off and, and everything's kind of restored. Now it will still settle and I know that. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, We'll get some fill dirt. There's some areas back here where the back fence was that's a little low anyway. So those will be good to fill. So over here, we now have absolutely nothing other than we have the pool pump. Oh yeah, I forgot my water's back here. And we cleaned up this back corner to make it look nicer and filled everything in here. Of course, you can tell I've been using the concrete pad here for the place to bust and I think that was just as good a place as any given the fact that's going to get ripped out in a couple of days anyway. Over here we have the chicken coop kind of airing out. I cleaned it out just a little bit while I had it open. Nothing major. And then I came over here and for the chickens they've been doing an awesome job but I went ahead and I turned this with a shovel and took some more of the bricks out so that they could get underneath it and then i'm going to let them continue to work this today through tomorrow afternoon they actually had done a phenomenal job back there with the old concrete post that was dirt almost all the way to the top when they started and they dug it all the way out and then i filled it back in when i turned some of the dirt and dug up some of the old plants so as you can see they are going to town down here they are absolutely loving it and while I'm recording this, I can't see anything because I have the sun right behind me. So I hope y'all can see, not that I'm Southern or should have a Southern accent, but I hope y'all can see what they're doing down here because they are just busy little chickens and doing what chickens do. So I think that pretty much wraps up what we're going to get done today. Um, I might throw this into a post with another one. I got to get those 11 poles down to the barn. So I want to get those out of here tonight and then wrap my tools up. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I bent my tamper rod. So the suction with the mud and the clay was just so bad on a couple of them, especially the corner posts, that it literally was uh, almost impossible to get out. But we, we did it anyway. So, all right. A wrap today up. Thank you guys so much for watching today's vlog, and we will catch you on the next one.